Welcome to the Baby Boomer Babe Show with your host, Lady Lou, connecting you with friends, great stories, and wonderful adventures. Hello, world. This is Lady Lou, the Baby Boomer Babe, coming to you from deep in the heart of Texas. I'm so glad you've joined me for this little adventure. It is titled, More Things this baby boomer gladly gave up. This is part two. In a previous podcast, I related the first five things I have given up over the years. It is titled, Some Things This Baby Boomer Gladly Gave Up. If you haven't listened to it yet, go to my site at www.spreaker.com, S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R, spreaker.com, forward slash show, S-H-O-W, forward slash the baby boomer babe, and do a search for that title. It's number six. As a quick review, here are the first five things I gladly gave up. Number one, wearing makeup. Number two, having perfect hair. Number three, wearing high heels. Number four, having to go shopping and buy all sorts of fancy clothes, accessories, and jewelry just to impress other women. Number five, having to be vain and pretend I can see just to avoid wearing glasses. Now, here are some more things I have given up gladly. Give up number six, driving at night. Now, I have to say I didn't give this one up gladly. A little disclaimer there. This one was a toughie for me. I actually had to do this over six years ago when I moved to the country. My vision would just not allow me to see the roads out here where there are no street lights. It is real dark out here on these little country roads. One night when I got home after dark, I almost missed my driveway. I just couldn't see it in the dark. I tried those night vision glasses, but they didn't help. Rats. So I just gave up, and now I stay home at night. I really felt deprived when I had to miss going to a few events or a friend's house at night for a party. Oh well, such is life. Now that I've had the cataract surgery and can see again, I have still tried not to go anywhere at night. I'm kind of chicken. Who knows, I may be able to do it and see all right, but I haven't tried it yet. But one of these evenings, I may give it a shot. Hmm, but probably not. I'm so used to staying home at night that it will have to be something like an emergency, and I'm not planning any of those, as you can imagine. Give up number seven, wearing low-cut blouses. There is something to be said for cleavage, but not on old ladies. The younger generation can have this one. I long ago gave up trying to impress anyone with my bosom. Oh, yeah, I have one. I call it the shelf. Why? Because it is very good at catching things that fall off my fork as I'm eating. Anyone else have this problem? (laughs) Back when I was teaching networking classes, I called this little mishap a boob boo. Kind of like boo boo, but boob boo. It's always got a good laugh. There is just nothing more embarrassing for a big busted woman, or any woman for that matter, than to go around with food stains on her blouse or dress. Give up number eight, reading books. Again, this one was not something I gladly gave up. I just was forced into this one. So when my eyesight began to fail a few years ago, I had to stop reading, and I love to do it. The challenge was both diabetic-related and the growing cataracts. But it was too uncomfortable to read back then, and it was very time-consuming and tedious 
because I had to use a magnifying glass. I would usually only last about 15 minutes and then give up and go do something else or else I just fell asleep. Ah, oh, yeah, I'm good at that one. <laughs> I think that's a nice one for the older baby boomers. We can fall asleep whenever we like. What a treat. Lately, uh, I did find out that I could download the Kindle Reader app on my desktop computer and have uh, a way to read my uh, Kindle books, at least, and sometimes my PDFs and other things that come across my email that I like to read. The Kindle app itself is free to put on any computer, smartphones, and tablets. You don't need to buy the Kindle device. You just use your computer devices. And you can blow up the pages as large as you need to be able to read them comfortably. Just hold the shift key on your computer down and scroll forward on your mouse. I love Amazon for doing this free app. But then they do want to sell more books, and it works. Now that I've had the cataract surgery and can see again, I've been doing a bit of reading to retrain and strengthen my eyes. I've always loved reading, but I'll have to get back into the swing as I've gotten out of the habit of reading. I am so thankful to my wonderful eye surgeon. I will become a reader again. Give up number nine, drinking soda pop. I gave up drinking soda pop about a year and a half ago. Darn, I do love the stuff but it's just not on my list of approved items. It makes my blood sugar surge off the charts. And you may know it, but soda is also a diuretic, not good for the seniors. I have to admit, I fell off the wagon this past weekend. I was craving a brown cow. If you're a baby boomer, you know what this is. It's a root beer float. Black cows are Coke floats. I even love orange cows using orange soda pop. Anybody else have a taste for these? I make my brown cow using only Bluebell ice cream. If you live in Texas, you know all about the little creamery in Brenham. Well, it used to be little. They have grown and expanded so much over the years. They are probably selling ice cream in uh, many other states now, but they used to only be in the Houston area about 50 years ago. My, how time does change things. Last summer, two friends and I made the trip to Brenham and went to the Bluebell ice cream shop. On the weekends, there are no tours of the actual facility, so we just ate ice cream. Their scoops are very generous. And as I remember, only a dollar each. Yum. And yes, I had two scoops and almost couldn't finish it all. It was a lot of ice cream, but so good. During the week, they have tours showing everything from bringing the milk in to actually making the ice cream. I still haven't done that, but will soon. Want to go with me? It's a little day trip. When I Googled Bluebell Creamery just now, I found out they have a new flavor called Malt Shop. It's made with small milk chocolate covered malted milk balls and malted flavor chocolate ice cream. Wow, I am salivating. Takes me back to those old malt shop things that I had as a kid at the drugstore. Good grief. I have to go find it. But do I dare buy a half gallon? I may have to smack my own hand to keep from grabbing it up and bringing it home to scarf down. Maybe if I have a party and invite a bunch of friends over, we could share one. That way I won't eat the whole thing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Anyway, it is after 10 o'clock as I'm writing all of this at night. Otherwise, I would probably be in the car heading to town to get my malt shop ice cream fix. Mm. Oh, well, maybe tomorrow. Give up number 10. Any food that says low fat 
on the label. In my own defense, I tried to eat this stuff, just could not get it down. I felt it was tasteless, unappetizing, and sometimes loaded with sugar. Cheese, yogurt, soup, milk, you name it, and they've come up with a low-fat version. I do not consider any of them real food. Back when I lived on the farm, we had a hand crank cream separator in the basement. We milked one, sometimes two Guernseys or Jersey cows a day. They have a very rich fat content milk, unlike the black and white Holstein cows. When we put a bucket of fresh, warm, raw milk into the separator and started cranking, we got lots of rich, thick, yummy cream. What was left over was skim milk. Now, we actually fed this to the hogs, and they loved it. So now you know why I don't like skim milk. I consider it hog food. <laughs> Darn. Here's give up number 11, celebrating my true birthday. Back a few years ago, well, quite a few years ago now, when I turned 50, I made the decision to go backward on my next birthdays. So the following year, I told myself I was only 49. I kept this up for almost 10 years getting younger and younger in name only. It was kind of fun. I even felt younger. Then my 60th birthday rolled around and I fessed up and threw a 60th birthday party for myself, invited all my networking friends, and we had a blast. As more birthdays have rolled around, I've just ignored them. I certainly didn't feel like I was in my 60s, nor did I act or look like it. I'm fortunate in that I inherited my mother's youthful-looking genes. Now, this year, 2015, I've made a big decision. I'm going to throw myself a 70th birthday bash. Yeah, going to do it. That is a real milestone. Even though it's hard to wrap my head around the fact that I am that old, after this birthday, I do believe I may start going backward again, at least until I hit 80, and then I'll have another birthday party, and you're invited. Give up number 12, anything containing soybeans, soybean oil, and cottonseed oil. The reason for this one is that we used to raise soybeans back on the farm when I was a kid. They were used as fodder for cows and pigs back in those days. Aha, here we go again. I consider soybeans animal food, not people food. Another reason I do not eat soybeans or anything containing soybean oil is because I remember how we harvested them. We sprayed the beautiful, tall, green plants with a, an herbicide to defoliate them. Yes, we poisoned the leaves so they would die and then expose the beans under the leaves. That way, the harvester to, could get into the field and gather the bean pods easily. Don't you imagine that herbicide circulated down into the bean pods before the plants died? Yes, farmers do this same thing to cotton. They have to defoliate the plants to get to the cotton bowls. Then the cotton is separated from the cotton seed, and they make cotton seed oil. Yikes! Are we being fed poisonous food and don't even realize it? From what I've read online, one of the ingredients in this herbicide defoliant is the same one in Agent Orange. Remember that from Vietnam? Oops. Thankfully, there are some foods made with organic soybeans and soybean oil and cottonseed oil. Hmm, wonder what they use to defoliate the plants. 
Gonna keep doing research on that one, but so far I have come up with almost nothing. Just read the labels on the products you buy. That's the best advice I have for you. I'm wondering, are you familiar with muscle testing? This is the easiest way to find out if a food or any product is good for your body. Here's how I do it. Hold the item, food, or whatever it is you will ingest or apply to your skin in your hand. Stand up straight with your feet about a foot and a half apart so you are stable. Then hold the item into your midsection, your stomach, and say these words, either aloud or silently in your mind. Is this item, whatever it is, good for my body? Like, is this salad dressing good for my body? Here's another little note for you. Most salad dressings these days are made with soybean oil, cottonseed oil, and canola oil. Yes, I believe even canola oil is not good for me. There are conflicting reports on the internet, so do read both sides when you Google it. Then you can decide for yourself about how to muscle test the foods you ingest. Just stand there a little while holding the item to be tested. And in a few seconds, your body will either tip forward after you've said the words, or it will tip backward, and it'll do it naturally. You can catch yourself easily to keep from falling over. If you tip forward, the item is good for your body. If you tip backward, the item isn't something your body likes or wants. There may be times when your body will not move when you ask the question, if this item is good for your body. When this happens, Either the item is neutral, or you may need to ask a different question, like, does my body like this item, and then name it, or is this item beneficial for my body, and name it. It's that easy. Do this for every ingestible item, or cosmetic, or sundry item you purchase that you will ingest or use on your body, and you may be surprised at how many times all of these things are not good for you, that your body just doesn't like them. Then you have a choice of whether to continue using the item or not. I often muscle test items right in the aisle of the grocery store or the drugstore. I've saved myself some money by doing this. Well, there you have it. Seven more things I have given up. Some not so gladly. Hope you've had fun listening to this podcast and we'll come back again and again. And please share these podcasts with your friends. The link again is www.spreaker.com forward slash show the baby boomer babe. Also, be sure to go to my blog and get your free baby boomers toolkit at www.thebabyboomerbabe.com. Com. I hope to see you again soon. This is Lady Lou, the Baby Boomer Babe, saying goodbye for now. Stay tuned for each episode to discover the new experience in building fun and community.